I've seen a lot of people when criticizing Aptera bring up Arkimoto, which is kind of funny because everybody just looks at the Arkimoto stock price and assumes, oh, the company failed, it's died because the stock went down. You don't do that for Polestar or Rivian, even though their stock has tanked a ton. But if you go to Arkimoto's website, they are still selling vehicles. I mean, sure, the company's probably in a very dire situation and there's a good chance they're going to die any day now, but they're still selling vehicles. And I've done research on the company, tried to figure out exactly what has gone so wrong. I watched Hyper Change's video on Arkimoto and I didn't find it particularly insightful on what happened to the company. It was basically just, I guess we spent too much on marketing. And if I were to guess, considering that Arkimoto still has a lot of vehicles available in inventory and the stock has gone down so much and they had to stop production, my prediction is that it had something to do with demand as well as various other things like Golly said, spending too much on marketing or not being able to reduce the cost of production by too much. And it comes up a lot whenever I bring up Aptera with people simply because I think they're both three-wheelers and people just associate them together. These must be the same product category because they're both three-wheelers, which I think is a very wide generalization. It's basically the same thing as me saying, well, the Lordstown pickup truck was a big failure. That didn't work out. Therefore, electric pickup trucks cannot succeed, right? The Cybertruck is also a truck with four wheels, just like the Lordstown endurance. Therefore, it's gonna suck. Therefore, no one's gonna want to buy it. That's a gross oversimplification, right? There can be a lot of differences between vehicles, even if they both are capable of sitting two people and they both have three wheels. That's pretty much where the similarities end. And I like the general concept of the Arkimoto. I apologize for not talking about them in the past, but the more I researched them, the more I started realizing, yeah, I can see why this doesn't really work for a lot of people. And it mainly comes down to what I think is the huge difference between the Terra in the Arkimoto is efficiency. How much energy you use per mile. And relative to a car, sure, the Arkimoto uses quite a bit less energy than an EV, but it's still relying on an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack. And because of its open air design and, you know, there's no doors. I mean, there's certain variants that have doors, but very rarely do you see an Arkimoto with windows. Most of the ones they've made are basically just open air. They brand it the fun utility vehicle, which I always questioned, like, how do you dictate what's fun to people. Is it just that it accelerates fast and has a low center of gravity? I guess in that case, all EVs are fun utility vehicles, but yeah, the efficiency basically considering the size and the weight of the vehicle is honestly not as good as I thought it would be. I mean, their website claims that you can get a little over 100 miles of city range, which means that most of its life, it's driving around 30, 40 miles per hour. But once you take it up to highway speeds, which it only maxes out at about 70 miles per hour, that kind of limits its transportation capability a lot, like don't go on I-5 if you can only go 70, but also your highway range is only about 30 miles at that speed. So that really fundamentally limits the use cases of the Arkimoto, and sure it's a lot cheaper than a lot of four-wheeled EVs sitting at like $20,000, but that range in that open air of the Arkimoto design I think fundamentally limits the use cases for it quite a bit, because now, you know, most people don't want to charge their battery to full and completely drain it by the end of the day, they want to have some buffer in there they don't want to worry about degradation after just a couple of years, canceling out how much they can actually drive the car, and that results in most people who buy an Arkimoto only being able to drive it, you know, 10, 15 miles. And I think the real threat to Arkimoto was not other EVs. It's not like people were thinking about getting an Arkimoto and then just going ahead and buying a Model 3 or Y. The real threat to the Arkimoto that I think kind of killed the company is e-bikes. If you're really just planning on driving yourself around or one other person, it is so much infinitely cheaper to just get an e-bike. Those things, some of them, even without pedal assist, can go easily 20 miles, 30 miles if you get different battery modules. And of course, infinitely cheaper. You can find some of these for a thousand bucks or less. And e-bikes are great, and I would love to dive more into those in the future, because if you're just needing to get around town, and you're just needing to go 10 or 15 miles within the day, and you don't mind having an open air design, right? Like you don't mind not having doors or windows like the Arkimoto, then yeah, the e-bike honestly just solves so much of the same problems. You even drive them both with handlebars. And there's so many similarities and so much overlap in my opinion between an Arkimoto and an e-bike and the e-bike is just substantially cheaper that yeah, I struggle to kind of justify what does the Arkimoto have over an e-bike. I guess if you're into last mile delivery services, 
you could have a little bit more storage space in the Arkhamoto, but again, it's not terribly cheaper than a full-on EV at that point. And clearly, the company's not doing all that well. So the market doesn't really seem to find itself, whereas if we start opening up our minds to the Aptera concept, yes, still only a two-seater, still only has three wheels, but that's where the similarities end. Most of the people who have put down deposits on the Aptera were reserving the 400-mile range variant, okay? And the back storage area of the Aptera has over 30 cubic feet of space, way more storage than you could get in an Arkhamoto. And of course, the overall general shape of the Aptera has a huge emphasis on aerodynamics. And basically, this thing was designed for highway transportation because aerodynamics and your coefficient of drag really only start to matter when you get over 50 miles per hour. Whereas with the Arkhamoto, it seems like it was designed from the ground up to not really go much faster than 30 or 40 miles per hour. And of course, we should all acknowledge the elephant in the room that if you have an enclosed cabin, like you can get inside the Aptera and stay dry when it's raining, or if it's super hot outside, the Aptera has air conditioning, or it's cold outside, the Aptera has heating. You know, that unlocks a lot more potential if people know that, yeah, I can store this vehicle outside, I don't have to worry about the interior getting wet if I don't put it in a garage, and if I do want to carry around an extra person in the vehicle, we can actually sit side by side, and it's a lot easier to have a conversation and look at each other or share a drink or share food in the vehicle if you're sitting next to each other. That's what we're most comfortable with with cars. And I think the Aptera kind of replicates the most common driving experience most Americans and people around the world are used to when owning a personal vehicle, which is you have a steering wheel and pedals, you sit in a seat, you don't straddle anything like you do on a motorcycle or an e-bike, and it's an enclosed cabin with HVAC controls and a decent amount of cargo space behind you. Most vehicles on the road have an average of about 1.5 people in the cabin. The Aptera covers that, and most people who are driving around with one to two people are used to sitting next to each other and having a music player, having stereo controls, having onboard navigation, having those HVAC controls, and having windshield wipers so you can ride around in the rain, not have to worry about getting wet or getting too cold when we're experiencing those frigid winters. And again, the range thing is what a lot of people are used to on gas vehicles. They want to sometimes go 300, 400, maybe over 500 miles on a single charge, and that's something the Aptera was built for from the ground up. It's optimized for highway transportation, whereas the Arkhamoto is optimized for city transportation. I think a lot of people miss that whenever they just say, oh, well, the Aptera is probably not going to work out because it's just like the Arkhamoto. It really isn't. There's honestly very few similarities between the two. The Aptera also can support DC fast charging up to 60 kilowatts, which translates to about 600 miles per hour, which is pretty much what the Cybertruck peaks out at right now with V3 superchargers. And again, most people reserving the Aptera are going for the higher range variants. They're not buying the lowest range option, which is still more than like 15 times the highway range of the Arkhamoto on the cheapest possible option with only a slightly bigger battery pack. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about the efficiency differences here. Arkhamoto can get like, you know, 30 miles of highway range with an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack, whereas the entry model Aptera has like a 26 kilowatt hour battery pack, so just a little bit more, and that gets it like 200 miles of highway range. There's a pretty substantial difference there in usability, meaning like, yeah, you can drive to nearby towns and get home, plug back in, and not have to worry about running out of juice, and it uses so much less energy than the Arkhamoto, so that even if you are just driving around town, maybe just 30 miles a day, the Aptera is going to cost you far less to drive than even the Arkhamoto does, so if we were cross-shopping the Arkhamoto with the Aptera and factoring in five years of electricity costs, I bet the Aptera is still cheaper. And it's enclosed and has an HVAC system. Not to mention, Aptera actually has solar charging capabilities. Arkhamoto doesn't really cater to that demographic at all. So, again, I'm sure there was a lot of things that went wrong with Arkhamoto, but the overwhelming issue that I think is the fundamental flaw with their business model was that the product was just too expensive for the features it offered. The use cases were too niche because it was an open-air cabin, the range was not very good, and I don't think people were cross-shopping it with sedans, they were probably cross-shopping it with e-bikes, which it honestly has a lot more overlap with than it does cars, and that results in just a lot weaker demand. And the Aptera, exact opposite situation. They have way more demand than they can build orders for. Even if Aptera production started today, like right now, the first shift of the factory floor is optimized to build 20,000 vehicles per year, and they currently have over 46,000 paid reservations for this vehicle, meaning that even if production started today and they stopped taking new orders on the Aptera, 
we would have to wait over two years before everybody orders was filled. And of course, once the Aptera is in production and they do start deliveries of it and we start having more real world reviews and people start seeing them on city streets, I expect there would be another huge wave of orders because people are very curious about the design and they want to know more questions about it and a lot of people are hesitant to reserve or get invested in anything that is still conceptual, that is still in the R&D phase. But once it's out and in production and people are actually driving it and using it, a lot more people get involved and actually start to consider it. Like, oh, okay, I could actually buy one of these and start using it. So very likely there will be another huge wave of demand once Aptera deliveries begin. And most people have switched their reservation for the Aptera to the launch edition model, which on the website is targeting around a $35,000 starting price. So the business model, I think, is going to be built a lot more around $35,000 and $40,000 average selling prices, whereas the Arkhamoto was counting on, you know, twenty to $25,000 starting prices, all of which on vehicles that were mainly just used for driving around town. Very, very different business models, even though, yes, they both have three wheels and they both sit two people. But there's even some e-bikes where you can fit two people on them. So again, I would much rather buy an e-bike before I bought an Arkhamoto, just so much cheaper and with about the same range capabilities. But what do you guys think? Are there more similarities between these two companies than we realize? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.